You're tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. But it's not just any Ross Tucker football podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday presented as always by DraftKings. Love those dudes. Love those of you that just do little extra things to help the show. Like Benjamin Brown with the YouTube shout out. All you have to do is go to YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Subscribe and make any comment and you get a chance to get a shout out from yours truly, which I love giving to you guys. I just email you a video. It's kind of what the same thing people pay for on Cameo, except you get it for free. So go to youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, hit the thumbs up to subscribe and make any comment. You can even say just here for the shout out Ross. Speaking by the way of youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, we're giving away a free Madden code today on YouTube. So make sure you go to the YouTube today. There's a special way, YouTube exclusive way to get a free Madden code, which is awesome. Can't wait to talk to Dietrich Wise momentarily. I got an article coming out this week on the 10 most underrated, underappreciated players in the NFL. And I've got Dietrich Wise as one of my 10 He had a fantastic year last year. It was a down year for the Patriots, so it kind of got lost in the shuffle. But he is a very, very good player. Looking forward to talking with Dietrich momentarily. We do have a new patron, which is awesome. This time of year, we get a bunch of new patrons because they either want to chat with the rest of the peeps on the private Slack channel or they they just want the bets in black and white because even money, our guy Sean Grady, he will start to put all the bets that we have on the Even Money Betting Podcast on our private Slack channel. So welcome to the family, David Malum, patreon.com slash RT Media. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Well, so this is really good timing because this week for the 33rd team, I'm writing about the most underrated and or underappreciated players in the NFL. Pretty good time to have one of them on the show. He's had an unbelievable career for the New England Patriots. Going into year seven already, feels like he was just a young buck, and now he's the captain and one of the Wiley veterans. I'm talking, of course, about the big D lineman, Dietrich Wise. Coming off a career year, by the way. Dietrich, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. How you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Always good to talk with you. Let's just start with that. I I know what it's like because I went through it, but does it feel like year seven? I mean, does it feel like it's gone fast? Because it feels like you were just, we were talking about how much potential he had and he's 6'5", 275 and long arms. And now you got to be one of the oldest guys on the team. Yes. Yeah, definitely one of the oldest guys for sure. And I do have my days where, where you know, I wake up in the morning like, all right, year seven, uh, here it goes, you know. But uh, for the most part, it has been going really fast. It's been a blur. Like the first three or four years, I'm like, wow, I was, I'm in year four already. Here it is. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm still here on the team. It's definitely a, a blessing, but also a wonderful experience. You know, um, that's rare nowadays to, to be with the same team. And you might end up having your whole career there being in New England. But even just to start – the first seven years there, um, what does that say about, you know, that organization or your fit in that organization? You know, um, I know it's one is a testament to hard work. Uh, my father and my parents instilled a lot of tools in me so I can be, be able to be mentally tough, uh, to withstand a whole lot, but also uh, to they also instill work ethic as well. Um, just be able to to face the daily grind day after day. And then also uh, learning how to adapt to different scheme ad- uh, schemes or different coaching styles and stuff like that. And I think uh, just thankful for them to, to give me those tools so I can last just as long in the league. 
So, you know, I ended up playing Dietrich for five teams. So, okay. uh, including New England in 05 and 06, way before you got there, obviously. <laughs> but um, I'm just curious, are you ever curious? And I'm sure you talk with some of your buddies that go to other teams or maybe maybe mm -hmm. college buddies. Are you ever curious what it's like uh, on other teams? Because you kind of only know like Belichick and the Patriot way. Yeah, that is true. I, I only know one way of football. I have heard through my other teammates who have came from other teams or left the Patriots, how they operate practice and meetings and weight room stuff. And, you know, you want to get a – it's like just listening to to, to folk tales because uh, it's never going to happen here at the, at the Patriots. But it's just one of those things that you kind of listen to and, like, be amazed. But, like, oh, wow, okay, I didn't know they did this or did that. And that's how it is. What what do you like best about playing there? I mean, obviously you've been there for a while now. What what are the aspects of sort of the Patriot Way and organization that that you really have taken to? Well, you know, one of the, the atmosphere in the locker room and on the team, it's it's like a family. Everybody's close, close, close knit. Everybody has one goal that's that's to win, but also at the same time, we all support each, each other in our outside football adventures. And we love to kind of like get together around the dinner table or the locker room just to chat it up and about whatever. Uh, the fan base here is nice. Uh, every time you you leave the house going to the, to the game, um, the fans are just they love football. They love, love the Patriots, and they're just crazy about us. So it's, that's always fun. And really, just um, yeah, I, I guess those two things. And this playing in this league is is, is awesome. Playing against a lot of great players and also playing with even better players. Um, I've been here for seven years, so I've been around um, a lot of great players on our team, from, from, from Brady to Gronk to uh, Hightower to Devin, Trey Flowers, guys like that. Um, just name a few. Uh, great players, great, great leadership, and also great expertise that they have passed down. Do you notice any difference, Dietrich, from when Brady was there to, to since he's been gone? I mean – you went from like arguably the best quarterback of all time, who was also like in his late thirties at that point, to a rookie in Mac. I mean, that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty abrupt change. Well, you know, with with any team, when there's a player that that leaves, there's always a lot of adjustment. Who's going to fill in that that role? Who's going to do this? And I believe when Mac came, Mac did a, a wonderful job his first two 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 years of establishing himself. And we're definitely looking forward to seeing what he can do this year. He's grown tremendously. Uh, he's he's commanded the team, and he, he's also commanded um, his offense and and how he talks and how he plays. And I, I'm I'm very eager to see his growth this year. Speaking of that, uh, the Patriots drafted a guy who has a similar body type to you in Keon White, and I don't know seven years ago that. You were the young guy people were excited about, and I'm sure you had yeah. someone that helped you along the way. Who was that yeah. that kind of helped show you the ropes? And, and are you trying to do that for Keon? Most definitely. So so when, when I came in 2017, I had Rob Nikovich, Trey Flowers. Um, I had uh, Lawrence Guy. Those guys were on, on the D-line, kind of just teach me. And pretty much the whole D-line group, they were obviously older than me. So they always told me little things, Mark, Mark, Mark and Brown. They all told me these little small things to to improve here, to how to how to be a pro here, and uh, everything that I've learned in these last seven years, I'm pouring in, into Keon. Keon's a very intelligent, very bright kid, um, very fast and aggressive. So we love the, his uh, his uh, style of play, and uh, definitely looking forward to him also having a great year too. So last year you had a career year in terms of seven and a half sacks. 59 tackles. I mentioned earlier, I think that you're a little bit underrated, maybe underappreciated nationally. I know in New England, they love you. Um, do you ever feel that way that, that maybe, maybe you don't get talked about as much, you know, on the TV shows and stuff nationally, <clears throat> as much as perhaps you should, you know, as my coach, as you, you know, how Bill says, you, you have to ignore the hype, uh, ignore the noise. Don't believe it. Um, Honestly, my honest opinion, I've always just kept my head down and just worked. And as, and as long as uh, the Patriots love me, as, as long as they uh, see my value in, in the team and, and I know my value in the team, that's really all that matters. 
Um, all the rankings, it's, it's nice. They're byproducts of hard work. And I, I do aim to be there one day, but it's not going to make or break me if, if if I'm never ranked, whatever the case is, as long as we keep racking up these wins and getting these rings. So um, where do you feel like you have improved? I mean, obviously I see the sack numbers mm -hmm. and the tackle numbers, but I know – you know, you're the type of guy that's constantly working on your game, uh, yeah. whether it's run defense or whatever it is. Where do you feel like you've improved in recent years? Really, it's the refining of my skills in the run game, uh, making sure my hand placement, volume releases, getting off blocks faster, getting off my pass rush, making my, my move faster. Um, the faster I can make the move, the, 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 the more time I have to uh, uh, get to the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so I think in my later years, I was doing really good at pressuring, getting in his face, pressuring. But now um, I want it to be more effective on the quarterback and, and production wise, but also um, um, helping people around me as well get better. Uh, first part of my career, it was just kind of like, where can I fit in? Where can I fit in? I, I'm here playing my role, playing my role. But now that I'm evolving as a player, now I'm setting up plays for other people to make plays and kind of like being that 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 field general along with other guys on the team who also field generals so like if one player make a play other players too can also make make a play off that play you know absolutely love that almost as much Dietrich as I love Labatt Blue Light the official beer of the Ross Tucker football podcast and all of our podcasts drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends live life to the power of we always enjoy responsibly beer Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All right, so let's get to some some of the changes for you, uh, Dietrich, in recent years, one of which is you were a captain last year. That's pretty cool, man. To be captain Dude. of an NFL team, like, that's pretty cool. What, 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 what did that feel like? You know, it was an honor. It was an honor to be a captain on a team. It's, uh, I want to say, one of the highest respects you, you can get as, as a man, but also – as a member on the NFL team, I, I took it. I, I took it in stride, and I, just, I said, you know what? Um, if this, I have their respect, and my goal is to keep earning their respect every day, and also lead this, this team to victory. And um, that's kind of what I do every day, on the field and, and off the field, and that's my goal. Well, you mentioned off the field, so um, I hear you got a you got a new addition recently. Is that the case? Uh, yes, yes. I, I have a uh, four-month-old son uh, turning five pretty soon, and it's very exciting. What? Yeah, what's that like, man? So I, I didn't have kids by the time I retired. Um, I'm just curious what – I mean, I know he's still super little, but um, does it change your perspective at all on, on playing and, and what it means? Uh, it, it just heightens everything up. Um, I, it just adds to my why and adds to, to my purpose of, of playing, waking up in the morning. Um, training, grinding. I, now I, I, I just have that extra motivation, that extra push um, to improve. But it's a blessing, I, though. I, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And one thing um, I was reading, Dietrich, did you – are you vegan? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I've been how vegan long for five you, years. How long, how, uh, how long? Five years. We're going on five years. All right, so tell me what was the impetus for that? Like what, what made you start that? Mm -hmm. So, during during my college career and uh, a little bit in the beginning of my NFL career, I just sustained a lot of injuries and and um, my body was just feeling like it was broken down every single time after games and practices, and it was hard for me to re recover like I, how I knew I I could. So I just started to eliminate different things out of my diet, from red meats to dairy. And then it just became down just chicken and fish. I was doing that for a while. And then um, after a few cases, um, I just say, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut everything out and see how I feel. So I was doing like vegan days here, plant based days here, plant based days here. And I ended up uh just doing plant based the whole the whole time. So I do nothing but uh, you know, vegetables and uh legumes, you know, and fruits. And uh, I, I feel great. I feel wonderful after game and practice. I, I, I still get beat up, still get sore every now and then, but my recovery time is so much faster now. Wow, that's really easy. Uh, that's really interesting. So how do you get enough protein? Yeah, yeah, that's the number one question. Uh, so for the most part, 
obviously I have my shakes. Um, I get my, my protein in, but also I do uh, chickpeas, um, lentils. Those are my highest source of proteins as well. Um, and that's kind of like where I get it. So through beans, through, through uh, nuts and seeds and legumes like like that, that's kind of where, where I get my protein from. Do you miss Dietrich having like a, like, like a burger or a steak or anything like that? Or are you so far removed from it you don't even think of it that way? Yeah, I'm 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 far removed from the missing of the taste, but I'm not gonna lie. Definitely, when I go back home to Texas and I smell those that brisket, it does oh. smell good. It does smell good. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't have any of the desire to eat it. <laughs> All right, I have a question about that. Uh -huh. So it sounds like you're doing it primarily for football reasons in your career. Do you think there's any chance that when you're done playing? you might uh, partake a little bit in, in some brisket, or do you think just for overall health, you're still not going to? Yeah, just no, for over, over, overall health, I'm going to continue this lifestyle. Got it. Yeah. Um, you can check him out on social media at WiseHog94. Tell me about your foundation, Dietrich, when, when you started it and what you guys are doing. We started a few years back. I want to say it was 2018, 2019. Uh, we... Our main goal is to educate and provide uh, uh, positive inf influence in the community um, through multiple events. Uh, so we have we have uh, a wise big man camp where we install skills and tech techniques just for offensive and defensive linemen in the state of Texas. Uh, we kind of like bring them together. We teach them skills, and then we add a little new component, um, trying to. Um, build profiles for kids so that they can help get recruited. Uh, uh, we also have uh, hot meals for vets. Uh, we throw uh, block parties for um, the Boys and Girls Club so that so that we can help raise raise money for them and their programs. And then our newest uh, program that we're doing is Bridge to Trade, where we are um, we are talking to kids about trade schools and 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 giving them like opportunities and experiences to experience this trade so that they can have a uh, uh, pretty much change the trajectory of the life and knowing that college isn't the only way to make a living. You can also make a living through learning a skill and learning a trade. And that's kind of what we're doing with Bridge to Trade and the Wise Up Foundation. Man, I love all those, Dietrich. I really do. I mean, obviously, I love O-line, D-line camp sure. and helping with the recruiting. I have a recruiting business. So that's fantastic. Awesome. But then, awesome. but the vet stuff, and then that's very cool about trade school. I think more people need to be aware of that and look in, especially with how expensive college is. Yes. You know, I, I think more people need to really, and, and you can get paid really well doing certain trades, uh, especially yeah. if you get in and learn early. I'm uh, really proud of you, man. It's funny. You know, you don't, you never know what you're going to get when you talk to somebody. I don't think people would think, you know, the foundation and vegan and all this stuff, but that's what, yeah. that's why it's cool to interview someone like you and learn more about you. Stay healthy, man. Have an Thank awesome you. year. I think, uh, yeah, your first game, is it your first? No, maybe your second game, the Sunday night game, I'll be in the booth uh, for the radio. So really looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to watching have a terrific year and stay healthy. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful time. So we got a new sponsor. And I'm very excited about it because I shave a lot more during football season than I do in the off season because I'm on TV pretty much every week. Thankfully, I just got my starter set from Harry's. It's a $13 value for just $3 at harrys.com slash Ross. So it's got a five blade German engineered razor. It's got the weighted handle the foaming shave gel, which is amazing, and the travel cover, which is clutch for me. Then the really cool part about Harry's is you schedule delivery for refills as low as $2, half what you pay for other blades, all kinds of awesome skincare products that honestly, guys, we should use, especially when you get to your mid-40s like me. Highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industries. In the shaving industry, get your best shave ever this summer with Harry's razors and skincare products. Get a $13 starter set for just $3 at harrys.com slash Ross. That's harrys.com slash Ross for a $3 starter set. 
Tux Takes. All right, Ross. We had one game since Monday, and it was Washington and Baltimore. What do you think? That was a pretty intense, fun, cool preseason game, wasn't it? I mean, those guys were getting after it. Like, you can't tell me that both those teams didn't want to win real bad. First of all, it's the whole Beltway battle. You know, they're very close to each other, those two cities. They have a rivalry. Secondly, Harbaugh very clearly wants to win preseason games. And then for Washington, home opener under the new ownership, national TV. I mean, they played most of their starters the whole first half. The whole first half to make sure they won that game. Just some guys that jumped out to me. Zay Flowers, very, very impressive rookie for the Ravens. I mean, he looks to me like there's a decent chance he'll be their best receiver this year. We'll see what Odell Beckham Jr. still has. And then for Washington, I guess a couple things jumped out. Sam Howell looks comfortable. Sam Howell kind of looks like he knows what he's doing, which is highly encouraging if you're a Commanders fan. And then there was one negative note, Jack, that we'll talk about on today's Fantasy Feast podcast a little bit more. Terry McLaurin hurt his toe and got turf toe. That's not good. I mean, he might be available for week one, but that's a real negative to have turf toe like that. I've had that injury. It's even worse for a skill guy. I saw where Dr. David Chow, sportsinjurycentral.com, where I go for all my injury news, uh, was not real pleased with how that will affect McLaurin early in the season. That is absolutely something to keep an eye on. Colts running back Jonathan Taylor has been given permission to seek a trade. Indianapolis is looking for a first-round pick or an equivalent of that. Right. So, man, a lot to get to here, right? Question one is, do you really believe the Colts want to trade him? I would submit to you no. I think that this is sort of the next step. They're trying to prove to him, I believe, that there's not a big market for giving him the contract he wants. I don't really think the Colts do want to trade Jonathan Taylor. Also, think about the logic here. Think about everything he's done for the Colts. You know, let him in rushing, first team all pro, all that stuff. They don't want to pay him what he feels like he deserves. But they think somebody else will pay a first round pick or multiple twos or whatever, the equivalent of a first round pick. For the right to pay him that much, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If Indy's not going to pay him that much, I don't think other people are. What does make sense is I am going to the Eagles-Colts game tomorrow night. Jack, I don't know if I told you this. Even though I'm not calling the game, I'm taking my wife and daughters because I never get to actually go to a game, tailgate a little bit, sit in the stands, be like a, I don't know, a normal person, normal fan. I already got my tickets from the Game Time app. It's incredible. $23. I can go to this Colts Eagles game. Highly encourage you guys get the Game Time app on your phone, download it, create an account, use code Ross like I did. You get $20 off your first purchase. Huge fan of preseason games. There are still some concerts out there. Terms apply, but you want to take your family to a game very affordable, or get into a college game, which is starting up. Create an account, redeem code Ross for $20 off. Download game time today, last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Raiders running back Josh Jacobs is reportedly going to report by the opener. Bengals running back Joe Mixon is to shun questions from four specific reporters. Eagles linebacker Miles Jack retires and wrist surgery for Seahawks rookie wide receiver Jackson Smith and the Jigba. Jacobs is always going to be back by the opener. We knew that. Uh, Mixon's not happy with how his off-the-field stuff's been reported. Miles Jack could probably tell he was going to get cut. And Smith and Jigba... Another one that doesn't sound good, according to SportsInjuryCentral.com. We'll talk about that more on the Fantasy Feast podcast today as well. Buccaneers named Baker Mayfield the starting quarterback. No real surprise there. Beyond curious to see how well Baker ends up playing this year. Titans quarterback Caleb Farley's house in suburban Charlotte blew up, killing his father. 
Unbelievably awful, awful, awful news for Caleb Farley, who's had a very tough go of it on and off the field. Obviously, thinking about him during a time like this, I think we're done here. Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network on Samsung TV+, Plus, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Need to give out some shout-outs. We always do. If you need a gift for any person, for any reason, it's myfrontpagestory.com. There is no better gift you can give someone. Then you got backofficeschedule.com, go-bangles.com, steakhousesports.com, humanheadnyc.com, sportaculture, and pizza boy brewing.